In the latest chapter of The Game of Drones, DJI has just filed a legal complaint against the United States government, specifically the Department of Defense, or DOD. DJI attests they've been trying to engage the DOD to understand the government's rationale for designating DJI as a, quote, Chinese military company for more than 16 months. In the filing, DJI states it is neither owned nor controlled by the Chinese military. In November 2023, the DOD provided DJI with a report that claimed to substantiate their decision to designate DJI as a Chinese military company. However, DJI refuted these claims and its evidence. The result of the designation is that DJI has been branded as a national security threat, and as such, DJI claims to be enduring ongoing financial and reputational harm. Back in January of 2024, the DOD then updated and renewed the list, confirming DJI is still a company registered as a Chinese military manufacturer. They have also made it pretty clear that they are not a military company, nor have they designed or manufactured products for any military. From our perspective, DJI is not the only drone company that is headquartered in Shenzhen, China. Competitors such as Auto Robotics and other companies like XAG are not far away in Guangzhou. However, DJI is arguably one of the biggest consumer electronic companies in the world, alongside giants such as Apple, Sony, Canon, and Nikon. While DJI claims to not be a military company, their drones are finding their way into combat zones like the Ukraine and other countries. Their flexibility, ease of use, and performance make them well suited to be modified into weapons of war quickly. This is not an issue specific to DJI. Technology and innovation always find surges of advancement in times of conflict. We must balance innovation with the human cost of taking a more efficient sword into the battleground and maybe take a step back and consider if either regulation is the answer or there might be other avenues to prevent consumer drones from ending up in armed conflicts. We're not really versed enough to make an educated comment on trade disputes and competitive market analysis. The ongoing theme across the editorial and opinion space has been that what the USA is doing is considered to be fueled primarily by an effort by American domestic companies to stall DJI's effort in an attempt to catch up to their considerable technological and price point advantage. We're gonna leave any other further commentary to those more versed on the subject, such as the Drone Service Provider Alliance, Drone Advocacy Alliance, or other great YouTube content creators such as 51 Drones and Pilot Institute. As teased last week, Insta360 released the Ace Pro 2 earlier this week. The updated action camera features a new Pro Imaging chip in combination with the existing 5 nanometer AI chip and an upgraded 1 over 1 third 8K sensor, meaning you'll be sure to capture your inadvertent selfies of you staring at the camera muttering, is this thing on? In a never before seen level of detail. The wide angle lens has been co-engineered with Leica and has an aperture of f2.6, meaning that this thing is gonna be really good when shooting in low light situations. The camera shoots at a maximum video resolution of 8K, takes 50 megapixel photos, and features Insta360's flow state stabilization, so you can get those buttery smooth shots. Other notable features include a built-in detachable windscreen, 4K at up to 60 FPS in a pure video mode, and a Bluetooth microphone compatibility with Apple AirPods, DJI mics, and other types of Bluetooth microphones. You're gonna get 180 minutes of runtime at 1080p, 24 FPS with this little guy. You'll be able to recharge back up to 80% in just 18 minutes. Now, this is with USB-C power delivery fast charging. The ACE2 Pro Standard Bundle retails for $399.99 US and includes a wind guard, battery, mount, mic cap, and USB-C cable. There is a dual battery bundle as well that includes the same accessories but two batteries for $419.99 US. Last Thursday, various teams of high school students from the Fowler Secondary School in Syracuse, New York, ventured out to a local corn maze to perform a simulated crime scene investigation. The students are part of the school's public service and leadership program, a course designed at providing students with real-world experiences as they venture into different career paths within their chosen industry. Each of the five teams has its own designated role in helping with the investigation all helping piece together what really happened on the scene of the crime. Drones have been able to provide ground teams with vital information, allowing them to safely and confidently navigate through the corn maze towards the crime scene. It feels like every week we're seeing more and more stories pop up showing the usefulness of drones on the front lines. Just like the jaws of life, the drone is quickly becoming a must-have tool in the kit of first responders. The world's largest drone made for delivering goods has been officially announced by Chinese startup company Air White Whale. The company officially unveiled this drone during a ceremony in Changzhou and named it the W5000, a twin turboprop drone designed to transport various goods across the region. The drone measures at a staggering 22.9 meters with a 22.7 meter wingspan. It can travel 2,600 kilometers in a single flight. This is far from anything you'd see on a traditional drone like a Mavic or anything like that. The company has submitted its airworthiness application to the Civil Aviation Administration 
administration of China and is now waiting for its approval. The first model is expected in 2026. People will also get a closer look at the drone when it is shown off at the 15th China Aviation and Aerospace Exhibition in November. This is in Zhuhai in Guangdong. With China easing off restrictions in airspace lower to the ground, delivery drones are expected to provide new opportunities and increase efficiency for people and businesses and provide a lot of other opportunities. Cargo drones could prove to be incredibly useful among the transportation of goods in different industries. We just didn't expect to see a cargo drone that was this big. It is worth noting for pilots in Canada who wish to attach payloads to their drone or carry a heavy cargo, an SFOC would be required and extra precautions must be taken to ensure the safety of the operation. If you're interested in SFOC operations, we've got a whole podcast that deep dives into what is required for these types of operations. And we're going to wrap this up with an upcoming drone show. The Aerial Evolution Association of Canada is hosting their annual exhibition conference. This year's topic is Drones for Sustainable Growth in Industry and Technology. The annual conference and exhibition will be taking place from November 5th through 8th and is held in the Delta Hotels near the Marriott Ottawa City Centre in Ottawa, Ontario. The conference is run by the Aerial Evolution Association of Canada. The nonprofit association is a team that represents a cross-section of the commercial drone space within Canada. This aims to protect and grow the industry. Attendees of the event will be able to get training, network, and hear from key leaders in the drone industry, notably from Transport Canada, Nav Canada, DJI, and innovators in the advanced aerial mobility and beyond line of sight spaces. If you operate a drone service provider business or are looking to innovate in the space, be sure to check it out. It's a great opportunity to network with the other professionals and learn more about the advancements of drones and get latest information on the industry. If you're interested in signing up, check the links below for more details on how to attend the conference. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned to this week's podcast where we're going deep into autonomous drones. It airs this Sunday at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Hit that bell so you won't miss it, and we'll see you soon.